Welcome back from that musical break. And of course, thank you so much for keeping it on UBC TV, where we make sure every morning we have a guest in studios in our GMU agenda segment, and you're able to call and be part of the discussion. Well, water is life. So many people have said that, and indeed, life without water is almost next to impossible. And today in studios, we are going to be looking at issues of water, a government, what it is doing, and what it is planning for you Ugandans, and that is, of course, the Ministry for Water and uh, uh, Environment. And with me in the studios is the acting, that is a director for water and development at the ministry, that is engineer Kavuse Dominic, who is with us in the studios and with whom we are going to be discussing issues regarding water. Our topic will be water and environment. Of course, we know water and environment move together. We've seen water being of very good use to Ugandans and also water being a disaster where it's not been managed very well. But also where we crave for water in hard times, say drought, and farmers there, both livestock and those uh, that carry out plantations, suffer so much. But there's so much that government is planning for us. We must remember that right now as we speak uh, in urban centers, we have 72%. That is water coverage. And for the rural areas, that is 69%. Those are some of the efforts that government has taken to ensure that you can get water. How safe is it? Well, that is also another point. For us residents in many uh, areas within Kampala, and this will be just uh, one of my starting points, I'll need a comment from the man in charge of water, uh, that is uh, development. Uh, but uh, let me first uh, welcome you to the studios. Good morning, engineer. Good morning, Chirabo. How are you? Fine, thank you. It's a pleasure having you. It's a good pleasure to have you too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm happy that you have invited me to uh, talk about the water and environment sector mm -hmm. this morning. Okay, and of course with my colleague, that is Felix Sinkunda, with whom we are always together. Engineer, uh, before we even dive uh, more further into the topic of discussion, residents in Kampara are wondering, you're having some uh, water scarcity. Mm -hmm. Could you have uh, a hint on what is happening? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chirabo. But before I talk about uh, the water shortage in Kampara, mm -hmm. Allow me first to introduce the ministry in which I work. Mm -hmm. uh, we work in the Ministry of Water and Environment, um, and in the ministry we are responsible for water supply mm -hmm. and sanitation. And the, in the, that mandate, we construct water systems, we manage, operate, and maintain mm -hmm. the water systems. We also provide sanitation both on-site and off-site sanitation, i.e. piped sewage services. And then we also have the environment subsector, which is quite a very wide mandate. It includes water supply itself, but also includes other things like uh, uh, forestry, wetland management, uh, climate change, and uh, climate and weather services. So that is the ministry in which we are operating. It's a government ministry. All the work that we do, we do it on behalf of the government. Now, unlike in so many other sectors, when it comes to water supply and sanitation, uh, particularly water supply, it is uh, exclusively a mandate of the of, of government. We don't have uh, private service providers. All the facilities are provided by government. We don't have private sector uh, service provision. It may be there, but not for today. Right now, all the services are provided by government. That's one. Now, on the water shortage uh, in Kampala, uh, this water shortage is a, a result of uh, now the rapid change in, a, in, 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 in weather, in rainfall. You note that in, over the last two weeks, we had uh, some reasonable amount of rain, but all of a sudden, the, we, uh, a drought has now come in. And each time we have a, a, a drought, then we get shocks in the water supply, one from the supply side, but also from the demand. The demand all of a sudden increases um, you know, the, 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 the water that the, we are providing. Mm -hmm. You find that the demand from the public increases uh, in a very short time. And that's what we are experiencing right now. Our water systems are working very well, but the demand has 
significantly increased and that's why you see some water shortages in some parts of the of, of, of Kampala. Yeah. But having said that, government has planned to, uh, to, 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 to increase the water supply in Kampala city. Mm. Uh, right now, uh, we have a project where we are constructing a new treatment plant at Katosi, and we are also uh, constructing the transmission lines to evacuate water from Katosi to and deliver it to, to, to Kampala City, and also the, the reservoirs that are needed. The work is the, in the advanced stages mm. of, of construction. Okay. So in, by 2021, we expect that the, uh, this plant should be completed and ready to serve the people of Kampala. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, of course, now speaking about water supply in Kampala, uh, engineer, one would want to know, we must appreciate that water really hasn't been a problem for us mm -hmm. in as much as uh, it's a necessity. Ugandans are accessing water at almost all stages. One of actually the contributions of the government that we are appreciating. But the question would be, how safe is this water? Mm -hmm. That's also a question. We have had challenges in different uh, places. And uh, the question is, how safe is the water that people are getting for domestic use? Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. Now... We have uh, a number of uh, water sources for the people of Uganda. Uh, we have uh, the point water sources, which are these are sources which uh, where water is delivered at a point, and then people have to go and, mm -hmm. and fetch water mm -hmm. from that point. Mm -hmm. So those include springs mm -hmm. and the boreholes. Mm -hmm. Uh, delivering groundwater mm. to the people. So that's one. Then we've got piped water supply, um, which is water that is got from a source, say, like a river or a lake, mm. have it treated and then transmitted to reservoirs from where it is distributed to the population mm. and ultimately at the people's yard taps or inside the houses. Mm. That is the other option. Those are the main. Uh, supply options that we have for the propaganda. Mm. Now, on safety, it is one of the major uh, activities that we, we carry out. One, we have to make sure that the water that we, we supply is properly treated. Mm. Then it is also after treatment, but we also monitor and ensure that the, the water is not contaminated mm. al along the way. So that's what we do. Now, I can confidently say that most of our pipe water supplies are very well treated to international standards and also to the Uganda standards for water quality. That one is happening. But we may get some few episodes where you get uh, some contamination, but those are very rare. Mm -hmm. And normally what would we the contaminations be like? Because, uh, engineer, if you remember, about uh, three years back, there was a report that was released. Yeah. It was everywhere on social media, in the papers, how uh, water in Uganda was permitted by fecal material. Yeah. So what forms of contamination do we get, or should we expect? Now, of course, once water gets into contact with the, mm -hmm. a, a potential source of, of bacteria mm -hmm. or other... Um, uh, organisms, it gets contaminated. Mm -hmm. but, but as I've said, it can happen, but those cases are very rare. Mm -hmm. Now, the report you are referring to mm -hmm. was mainly looking at the springs uh, from places like, for example, the slum areas of Kampala, mm -hmm. which springs are very close to homesteads and, uh, and, and, and toilet facilities. Those are, the report was about those, those sources. But the Following that report, uh, there was an analysis that was carried out, and water in Kampala was found to be 100% uh, safe. And I want to um, confirm to the people of Uganda that the, the water supply that we have in Kampala and other major urban centers is, is very safe. Now, water from uh, boreholes and springs can also get contaminated. But again, that's why it's our duty as government to ensure that the, we, we prevent it. If it occurs, we have to rectify it. How would you rectify water from uh, springs and boreholes, which you know it doesn't go through any source of treatment uh, center like 
uh, the water that we get from the ministry, which is piped water, these are their treatment centers, has gone through a couple of processes to ensure that it's worth people and safe for drinking. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> there are two things. One, you can treat water, mm -hmm. including water from boreholes. Okay. But the, the most important for such uh, point water sources is to stop and cut off the sources of contamination. Mm. For example, like uh, for a protected spring, if a protected spring is in an area, then all homesteads and any other potential sources of uh, contamination must be at least 100 meters away mm. from that uh, from from that. Uh, um, from that spring. The same case with the borehole. You don't allow a homestead within 100, 100 meters from the, from the borehole. Mm. So those are interventions that we cut out. Again, I want to confirm to the people of Uganda that the most of our water from the boreholes, mm. I want to confirm to them that it is 100% safe. Mm. But in some cases, you may have cases where, for example, I've got the mineralogy, uh, where the water may be salty, and, uh, um, and, and it is, it's hard, so it may not be uh, very good for, um, uh, for, for general uh, use for domestic uh, supply. But again, those are minor cases. They are not very common. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we also try to demineralize the water. We provide some few simple technologies that can remove the, the hardiness, the, 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 the minerals mm -hmm. from the borehole water. But the over... Uh, most of our water sources are, uh, from the boreholes are extremely very, very safe. Now, uh, Engineer, I want also to ask a question. And as much as uh, you have tried so much to make sure water is available, and of course the coverage is quite tremendous, but the question also is, how affordable mm. is this water? Mm. Being a necessity of life for Ugandans, mm. there are challenges now that are coming up in prices. Mm. What informs this shift? Because... Uh, you may realize that water is also going up a bit mm. in price. It will be useless, in my opinion, if water is, ava is uh, accessible but mm. not available or mm. affordable for the people. Mm. How do we remedy this? And as government, what are you trying to do to mitigate some of the challenges of particular price? Mm. Okay. Now, on the issue of price, but also uh, allow me to explain to you that uh, the ministry has done a very very, very big job in making sure that the water reaches uh, many parts of this country mm -hmm. so that the majority of Ugandans can access clean and safe water. Mm -hmm. I will give you an example, uh, some few statistical information, mm -hmm. that the, in 1986, the water coverage was 18% only mm -hmm. for a population of 14 million people in 1986. Now, today, the coverage, as you have said in the, in, in the areas, is over 69%. Mm. But, but for a population area. of uh, 42 million people, you mm. see that difference? Okay? Mm. The other simple statistic, I'll tell you that in 1986, there were only 37 towns that had piped water. But mm. today, but today we have over 1,400 towns and small towns, including uh, trading centers, with piped water. Now that's the difference that uh, you can see. Mm -hmm. Now, I will give you another example. Mm -hmm. That uh, in 1986, there were only 20,000 piped water connections in the whole country. 20,000 connections only. But today we have over 700,000 connections across the country. Again, for in a population of 40 42. million people, mm -hmm. but for about 15 million people in living in the, the towns mm -hmm. and the small trading centers. That is the, the, the progress mm -hmm. that the, we have made as a, as a country, mm -hmm. as, as a government. Mm -hmm since 1986. So, uh, we, as you have said, mm. the government has done a lot to ensure yes. that the water reaches. If you go to most of the towns now, mm. any trading centers, you drive from here to Guru, 
as well. All those trading centers have water. Are connected to that grid. They are connected. Mm -hmm. You move from here to Kisoro, all of them mm -hmm. along that highway, they are all connected. You move from here to Tumbale, up to Soroti, all those towns are connected with the or, 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 with, with water supply. So the water coverage is really piped water. Is That's piped true. water. That's but true. but uh, just the I beg your pardon. You, no, uh, you, yes. you, you, your question How was? I, no, what I was saying is that this is so good. Yeah. I like the fact, and it's a good thing for all Ugandans to appreciate that water is now available almost everywhere. Yeah. But the question is the affordability of this water. Aha. Now, on the affordability, um, one, again, it is our duty to make sure that the, everybody accesses water supply at a reasonable price. In fact, we are saying, Water should not be, should not take more than 5% of a, 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 a family, a family uh, uh, income. If, if your income, from your income, water shouldn't take more than 5% of, mm -hmm. of that household or income. That is our, 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 our guideline, that's our criteria. Now, on absolute costs, uh, Mr. Chirab, I want you to uh, understand that the, when you say in most on the average, a, a, a water, a, one unit of water is, is, is about 4,000 shillings. One unit. Now, one unit is uh, 1,000 liters. 1,000 liters. That is one unit goes for? 1,000 liters mm. go for 4,000 shillings. So that is four shillings per what? Per unit. You know, I'm finding this hard to believe. Yes, I'm telling you, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what you have in your books. No, 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 no. Even you check your water bill, mm -hmm. say from the National Water and Storage Corporation, mm -hmm. you check it, you'll find that the 4,000, by the way, the 4,000 includes 4, the VAT, includes the government tax. Mm -hmm. so that, that means without tax, it could even go to about 3,400. 3, yes. So that is the, 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 the cost. Now, of course, if you look at mm -hmm. the cost of a jerrican now, a mm -hmm. is what? Is, the, is 20 liters. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so times four, that's about 80 shillings. A jerrican. A jerrican, yes. 80 shillings. Only. Well, we have viewers that are watching this yes. show, engineer. Now, now and, I, I, uh, I would also tell you that the 4,000 mm -hmm. is for when you have water in your house, inside your house, mm -hmm. um, or uh, at the yard tap. Yes. So you don't go to fetch. But if you, you, you go to a public stand post, mm -hmm. a jerrican of water is only 25 shillings. That's what we are supposed to charge. Now, so, no, this is very interesting. And I want us yeah. to, uh, really, it is very uh, good that our viewer can understand yeah. where the billing comes from. Yes. And much of that may be castigation of government that yeah. they get it clear that a jerrican that, one pers that a person buys at 300 shillings yeah. Is actually 25 shillings. It is supposed to be 25 shillings. If I you're not getting it from your own direct uh, connection. Yeah, if you, you are getting water directly into your house, mm. you only it pay 50 shillings a, a, per, per jerrican. Per jerrican. If you are getting it directly into your like house. Like you have a yard tamp, it was wired, it is within your premises. Yeah. That is? But off your site, it should cost 25 shillings. Uh, now, if it is a public stand post, okay. mm. well, now meaning that the public stand post is owned by government. Yes. Mm. But, but you find the situations whereby we, the distortion we normally get mm. is that you find these where people go, they go to private pub stand post. You, you go to someone else's home. Yes. To, to, to fetch water from there, and then he, he charges you. He can charge you any amount of money that he but wishes. In Guinea, you know that and that's why you find people paying 200 shillings, 300 shillings, mm, or 500 per shillings per jerrican. And then, I think people <coughs> don't understand, they think that that is what we government is we are charging. That is the distortion. That but do we do. have these public standpoints, really? I have no... Mm. In, 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 for example, in urban centers in Kampala, do we have some? Yeah, yeah, of course, I don't know where you live. But I, I suspect where you live, there are no public stand posts. Mm. Uh, but if you go to most of our informal settlements around Kampala, we have installed these. I've in, seen them around Kamocha. Around Kamocha, yes, you go it. to Ksenyi. Mm. Yes. Mm, that's true. That's mm. true. Yes. Well, very interesting uh, there for the public to know that many of the times lack of information that we castigate, uh, we 
at out statements to government, but well, the man in charge has authoritatively given us the costs. And it is very interesting to know uh, that just uh, if you have what 1,000 liters will go for 4,000 shillings. Can you just imagine? That's mm. Exactly, that is what the ministry looks at. And if you're to buy it, uh, a jerry can, if you're taking 20 liters from your own yard tap, that is at 80 shillings. It's the can. A jerry can goes to uh, it 80 shillings. 80 shillings. Mm. And if you're to buy it at a stand post, of course, that is for public. Uh, that, a public stand post, that is 25 shillings. Yes. So that, those are the costs. What people charge you, mm. that is because factors of demand and supply, it's a liberal economy. But are you that limited? That Ministry of Water, you have no way. Uh, we, yes, we are in a liberal economy. People mm. run business their own way. But is it this then uh, beating the desire by the Ministry that everyone will, will be able to access water? The mm. private sector, should we, is it at liberty we leave it at that? Mm. Now, mm. of course, again, we as a government, mm. you know, we, you are working in a population mm. to avoid uh, exploitation of the people, mm. we encourage mm. that the, every home should have its own connection. That's okay. what we encourage. Okay? And we, we make uh, practical mm. steps eh, to ensure that it happens. Like when you are constructing water system, mm. when the contractor is here on site, we, uh, we, we, we promote connection, water connections, at, at yard connections in the homes. And even the government subsidizes mm. that cost, subsidizes the cost of connecting mm. to someone's home. And we have done it. Yes, so you I find in, in some small town, mm. we, we, we make sure that before we leave, you have something like 600 connections. Those are 600 mm. families. families. Mm. So that's what we do. So that we avoid people getting, uh, uh, being, ex um, uh, you know, exploited, exploited by mm. some other people who, who would have their own, uh, their, their own yard connections. Mm. Now, w we have also put uh, what we call a prepaid meter in some of the areas. Mm. If you go, uh, you move towards the um, Kayunga, there is a town called Karajika Bimbi. Mm -hmm. We have installed the prepaid mm. meters at the public stand post. Mm. Now, in, on that one, there is nobody between you and the, and the public stand post. Mm. So you go to the prepaid meter, it's automatic, with your card, mm. you swipe, and the, the system dispenses oh, wow. 20, 20 liters of, of water. Mm. And therefore you pay 25 shillings for that jerry card. Uh, well, I, I just want to remind our viewer that you'll be able to call in and participate in the program uh, where we are looking at water and environment. And with us we have the acting director, water uh, development in the Ministry of Water and Environment. So we are looking at issues of water basically. Uh, government's plans, you need to know what they are planning for you and the achievements so far where the Ministry would say has performed uh, great in the area of ensuring that people get safe and clean water. With the mm -hmm. coverage uh, of course still if we are to look at 72% in urban centers it is a step taken mm -hmm. but there is still so much that should yeah. be done. Yeah. What are some of the plans that you are pushing forward for you guys to ensure at least we, we shift from the 72 percent in urban centers maybe a 90. Mm. Thank you Mr. Chirabo but mm. before I go to that comparatively water is the cheapest commodity mm -hmm. that you have uh, on the garden market. Mm. For example if I'm saying 80 shillings per, per jerrycan mm. do you know anything else that the 80 shillings can buy apart from water in this country? Possibly you not find it. I mean, a hundred shillings. Mm. A hundred shillings. What can it buy apart from water? You see, so water remains the cheapest item. Mm -hmm. I mean, eighty shillings for twenty liters. You imagine, compare with the, a bottle of mineral water. A bottle of mineral water is, is one thousand shillings. Mm. That's just mineral. <laughs> That's half a liter mm. of, of water. But mineral water. Mm. You compare with the um, a matchbox, a matchbox is about 300 shillings, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so on and so of course. Mm -hmm. So water is the cheapest commodity we have. Mm -hmm. But also we have done our analysis, we have found that if you have got a yard tap mm -hmm. for the majority of Ugandans mm -hmm. and you are using your water reasonably, on the average, Ugandans spend about 16,000 shillings per month. Mm -hmm. 
that's what your beer should be. Mm. If you are doing it, using it very well, and there's no 16,000 shillings mm. per month, virtually that one, most households mm. will afford that 16,000 shillings. A um, water bill, yes. The water bill. That is if you can ensure that many Ugandans have yard taps yes. and they have uh, personal connections to their homestead. Because the issue of exploiters yeah. who sell water to people is also something, however, you said you're addressing by ensuring that you have more people get connected. And we encourage Ugandans uh, to ensure that they get connected yes. to uh, avoid this exploitation. Mm -hmm. Yes, Doctor. Uh, now, Engineer, now. Um, uh, on the on our future projects to ensure that the coverage increases, mm. of course we have got the uh, what you call um, uh, areas of uh, I mean the, the we have got urban water, mm. we have got the rural water, mm. and in both we we have in all we have projects. Then there is also water for production. Mm. We also have projects within the water for production mm. or programs for that matter. Mm -hmm. Under the urban water, I can tell you that I've got projects mm. which are ongoing. Um, uh, supported by development partners like the World Bank, the African mm -hmm. Development Bank. Um, we have got a, um, a project in Karamoja mm -hmm. specifically, and I feel I should mention about this one because Karamoja is, a, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is you know, is, is dear to, mm -hmm. to this country as far as water is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I would think that in Karamoja, mm -hmm. we have about 60 towns with the uh, with the uh, with, with the piped water supply, mm. and then we we also have like uh, almost like uh, uh, eighty dams and the valley tanks uh, serving uh, Karamoja. Some of them fitted mm. with the windmills, mm. but we still have a job to do in Karamoja. So we have our projects. We have got a project dedicated for Karamoja for urban water. Mm. So we think in the next ten years, Karamoja should receive about eighty a uh, hundred percent. Uh, of, of water supply okay. in urban areas in Karamoja. Mm -hmm. The same case with the rural water in Karamoja, we also have dedicated, dedicated project. Then I've got a, a project for district headquarters. Mm. Where, where you have a, a district headquarters, you should have uh, water supply. Some districts are new, so you find there is completely no pipe to water supply. Okay. Uh, so uh, our duty is to ensure that that district water is fitted. But then also others, the water systems have become too small because the populations have been increasing. So we also have to expand that, uh, that water systems. Then you also have uh, projects in the waste water, uh, like in Kampala, which is uh, ongoing. Uh, we, we are also designing a, a big water project, a uh, waste water project in Kapeka to serve the industrial park. Then we have got a uh, projects, a project, projects which are looking at the use of solar energy as a source of water for pumping water from groundwater, even also from surface water, and this project is ongoing. We expect uh, our plan is to make sure that at least there is a, a solar water system mm. in each sub-county uh, in Uganda over the next, uh, the next five years. We have uh, identified the, that we have got about 950 sub-counties. So we also we are planned to provide 950 solar water systems in uh, the Do you give us country. a spell of time, engineer, when you're going to be able, when that means that the ministry is looking at to have accomplished these numerous projects that you can mention? Now, this, of course, you know, we, we have got, the, we have been implementing the mm -hmm. NDP2. Mm -hmm. Now we are going plan. to end, uh, okay. a national development plan Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. Now, our, according to our plan, mm -hmm. by the end of uh, the National Water Development Plan 3, mm -hmm. at least we should have attained a water coverage of about 90% mm -hmm. of, uh, of, 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 in this country. Well, the I just remind our viewer, our lines are open. The number is on your screen. Uh, please feel free to call in and ask engineer uh, a question regarding water. Let's first speak our first caller online. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm called Stephen Misangu and I'm calling from Barara. Stephen from Barara? Yes, please. Please I, go ahead. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask that uh, why do they charge, like I have hostels eh? mm -hmm. with like eight tenants mm -hmm. and the kind of water they are charging me, they call it commercial. Mm -hmm. But the water is used for 
domestic purposes. Mm. And we have always argued over that because they change the water is either for domestic purposes or commercial. Like a person who washes cars and it, you see that is commercial, basically. But for me, who's using it at home where people are using it for cooking and they are making the bills so high, mm. unnecessary, because they are calling it commercial when actually I'm not selling water. They are using it for uh, domestic purposes. So maybe he clarifies on that. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, English. Domestic is used at home for domestic purposes. Okay, thank not... you, Stephen from Barara. Uh, engineer will be responding to you. We are still picking more calls. Please feel free to call. That is the number on your screen, 702 And we'll get a response from uh, the person concerned in studios uh, who has told us uh, a lot that is being done by the ministry to ensure that all Ugandans get clean, safe water. And of course, we see the percentages so far covered in urban centers standing at 72% and in the rural areas, 69%. Yes, hello, good morning. You're live on UBC TV. Yes, good morning, Mr. Robert. Good morning, good morning engineer. This is Moliru Isaac. Yes, Isaac. Uh, Long time. How have you been? Happy New Year. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just doing good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to inquire about, to, to ask for me, the engineer, who dictates the prices of the water we pay, and how do we as Ugandans benefit from that money? Because mm -hmm. leaving aside the cost, ah. So Sorry, Isaac, we lost you, but our point was driven home uh, regarding prices and how we benefit. Hope the uh, engineer will be able also to respond to that. Uh, but you're still picking calls. It is Good Morning Uganda. Uh, every morning, wake up with us from 6 to the hour of 9, where we inform you and give you all that you need to know as you start your day. Uh, we are having uh, the man that is the engineer in charge of water uh, development at the Ministry of Water and Environment. And we are discussing a couple of issues, but you can feel free to pop in and ask any question regarding water. Do you have water in your area? Do you have piped, safe, clean water in your area, wherever you are and you're watching? We need to get your views. Hello, good morning. I'm sorry we've lost you, but we still want to know, are you among the 69 percent in your areas? Are you among the 72 percent in Kampala? And some of the challenges, so that we can better know how they can address them. He's explained very well the issue of prices, that I think many Ugandans now are just waking up to understand why don't I go and ensure that I'm connected, I get water within my premises to save money. Hello, good morning, caller. Please give me your name and where you're calling from. Yes, please, please be a bit more audible. Uh, sorry, I lost you, but please, if you're calling in, just move away from your TV set and try to be audible. We want to get you, we want our guest uh, also to be able to get you properly so that we can respond to your question or your observation. Well, I was saying the issue of costs has been explained, and I know now very many Ugandans have been encouraged uh, to have installations of water. Hello, good morning. Yes, yes good morning. This is Mariam calling from Fort Potro. Mariam from Fort Potro? Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, I, would like, I would like the engineer to highlight on the difference between well, which most of our people use in the village, mm. and then these shallow wells, which were being given by the government, but they are this kind of, our villagers call, I mean, local people call them overholes, but they are shallow wells. So I, I would like the engineer to highlight on that, uh, because there is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, the difference between shallow wells and... The ones for government. Okay, uh, I don't know if Felix has got in yeah, her. Yeah, or, okay, well, uh, Mariam, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, that is in Fort Potro, and of course, the engineer will explain. Uh, we'll throw more light on that. Uh, we'll still be picking more calls. Uh, I need one or two more. Hello, oh, sorry, we lost you, but that is the number on your screen. It is uh, 0702 23. 24, 25. If you're to call in, please kindly move away from your TV set or reduce the volume uh, and we'll be able to communicate. Just be a bit more audible and of course you'll get a response from the guest we have today who is the acting director. Hello, good morning. Please kindly give me your name and where you're calling from. 
Uh, Lily and Ranga, calling from Njeru municipality. Lily and Ranga, Njeru municipality. Yes, please. Please go ahead. Um, we had the, the site, so National Water Fight connected about five years ago. Oh. But up to date, we don't have water. People walk long distances for water. We are already suffering when we go here. I don't know how much water is going to help out with that question. Thank okay, thank you, uh, Lydia Nuranga. That is from Njeru Municipality. Five years ago, they have not seen water. Mm. Uh, they do not have water mm. uh, there despite the ministry's efforts to try and connect them. Uh, well, uh, I think we'll first get a response to some of these questions. And then when we return, engineer, in, if we still have time, we'll be able to pick. Okay, let's pick our final caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Please reduce the volume of your TV set to avoid the echo. Surumani Okuvesironko, please go ahead. Sulaimani or Rokukuba, no Kubango, Raba, UBC TV, Webber in you. Sulaiman from Suronko says, we have, they, are, they are connected, but the water is only within the town, township. Yeah. Uh, township. So mm. the outskirts, uh, they have their taps, they connect. They are waiting for water. Mm. They so couldn't they see bought the, uh, yeah. the taps before <laughs> they have the water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Well, uh, we we'll now uh, go back to engineer and respond to some of the callers. Stephen from Barra, uh, the difference between commercial and domestic. He mm. says he has hostels, mm. and this water is not for coal. He's not selling the water. Mm. It's used for domestic consumption, mm. but the bills is categorized under commercial. Mm. And probably also the billing. What's mm. the, the difference in billing? Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, uh, view, view and the quarter from Mumbarara. Uh, on the issue of commercial uh, rates or commercial tariffs, um, I want to tell the viewers that the, uh, we, we, uh, we categorize uh, the domestic supply. Uh, it's the lowest because the interest of government to make sure that the may, most people uh, access affordable water. Now, commercial is for those entities that uh, use large volumes of water for purposes of uh, commercial or economic activities. Now, the, we also have industrial tariffs. And uh, I'm glad to tell you that the, the industrial tariff, uh, which is uh, a new policy of government, is lower than even the domestic uh, tariff for purposes of uh, encouraging uh, industrial growth you have heard of the presidency promotion of uh, industrialization of this country. So our contribution is to deliver affordable water supply for industrial investors. Uh, investors. So the, their tariff is lower. But I want to assure the viewers that the, the difference in rates between the domestic supply and the commercial supply, the difference is extremely very small. Extremely very small. If they are in the same, the, the same bracket, but it is slightly higher. Now, this is uh, normally the practice the world over, and uh, some of the reasons why it's like that, this practice the world over, is that one, you want to be able that the, com the commercial activities subsidize the domestic supply. That's one. But also, two, for someone who is using large quantities of water, you do not want in a waste in a, an in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a large consumption establishment. Because mm. any small waste translates into big losses of water. But engineer, uh, when we look at Stephen's concern was that he doesn't believe these are, con okay, could be getting money from the, these hostels, yeah. but the water they are using, in his opinion, is not selling the water. These are part of the people within this resident. That is yeah. where I want you to clarify. <laughs> yeah. If I have my homestead and yeah. I have tenants uh, so they are using this water yeah 
I'm not selling it, but it's an entitlement. I, I have an apartment, it's connected to water. Why yeah. does my bill include commercial? That is, I think, what okay. Stephen wants to get. I think Stephen has a good concern. Mm. Of course, if you have got an estate, but each house has its own meter, yes. then that's purely that's the domestic supply. Mm. But I think this is a hostel mm. with, say, one bulk meter, one big meter. Mm -hmm. So I, ideally, it is also a large consumption of water. But generally speaking, as I've said, mm. where you are using water for uh, an economic activity, mm. then uh, it is, uh, we, we go for commercial rates. Now, this applies to people like uh, who are managing uh, hotels, uh, but mm. also schools, for example, um, and hostels, washing cars, uh, large-scale uh, construction uh, site. Mm. Uh, that's also commercial. But I want to st stress that the, the difference between commercial and domestic is extremely very, very small. And so still uh, commercial does not mean that inside you're selling the water. No, no, no. But no. it also looks at the quantities of which uh, go through uh, the j j just, just, just engineer to be clear on his question. Uh, you have a setup for a, a, an economic purpose, yeah. like a hostel. Because mm -hmm. the idea of a hostel is for you to get money out of that mm -hmm. but you want to pay water as a domestic usage mm -hmm. is, 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 I, th I think that that's the question yeah. so uh, how does that work because if, if in, in a financial setup someone wants to pay a domestic bill mm -hmm. not a commercial mm -hmm. it, it is I think, uh, you, you have a point mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> what Stephen was looking at many people thought that commercial means I'm selling this water. Mm. Don't look at the large quantities as you've mentioned, a huge construction site that is going to use a lot of water and large mm. countries will be running through the meter. Mm. So that will, a school, a school is not selling water, mm. but because uh, they have uh, huge quantities running through the meter, that amounts also to commercial. I hope Stephen uh, mm. from Bara, your question has been answered very well. Mm. Now we go to uh, who dictates the prices? Isaac. Uh, now, that is Isaac. Uh, good question from Isaac. <laughs> who determines the cost of water now? I want also to Mr. Chirabu to, to know that uh, our tariff for the 80 shillings that uh, we talked about per jerrycan mm. or the 4 shillings per liter, mm. that cost is uh, for, for, from uh, the government uh, um, policy, government uh, decision, is that it only covers the costs of delivering that water to your premises, mm. operational maintenance cost. Mm. It does not include the money that the government invested into the, into the system. Mm. So in other words, the, the money that the government invested into the system is a grant to you. To the citizens. Mm. To the citizens. So we only pay for the operational costs. Exactly. Okay. The, the money that is used to treat the water, mm. to pump the water. Up to the point where we use it for. Up to the point where we use it. That is what, we ch that's what is in the, mm. the 80. So when we are counting the, the costs, when we are setting the tariffs, we look at those costs of operation and maintenance. Then we say, okay, each cubic meter, we are able to produce it. So, so we, by those costs, we come out with what we call a production cost. Okay. So now this production cost is the one now which will determine how much money we charge. So, and, and then, of course, we have to, to know that these charges are negotiated. We don't just wake up one day and say, this is the cost of water. Okay. No, no, no. We, we, we work out the production cost. We bring this information to our various stakeholders, including the users themselves. And once we have agreed that this is the production cost, and therefore this should be the tariff, then that tariff has to be gazetted. It, it has to be approved by the minister responsible for water. And once the minister has uh, approved that tariff, then that's what the utility agency will have to charge. The utility agency itself cannot come out and say, this is the, the cost of water. Mm. So it is a negotiated, it's a process. The production costs, negotiations, and then approval by the minister responsible for, for water. For some time, mm. then the, 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 the tariffs can be reviewed depending on the cost. Of course, now you know that electricity is one of the major inputs. Mm. So when electricity goes up, automatically the 
production was also, also uh, increased. Mariam from Fort Potro, shallow wells and uh, I think it was boreholes? Yes. Mm. Now, the shallow wells, mm. the difference is it mainly in the distance the, from the surface up to where you, you get your main aquifer or your main water supply. So for a, a shallow well, it can be anything between zero mm. to about 30 meters mm -hmm. uh, deep, deep, deep. Now a shallow well can be also constructed using uh, hose hand dug, mm -hmm. men going in and, and digging the shallow well up to certain, up to certain depth. But it can also be um, uh, constructed using equipment, uh, a drilling rig, mm. which can go in drill up to about 30 meters. And if you can get your water within that distance, then that qualifies to be a shallow well. Mm. Then a deep borehole is one that goes beyond 30 meters. And these days we go up to 150 meters deep in order to get this borehole. Mm. Of course, the deeper you go, the, 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 the more chance you have of having water that is, has no pathogens, is, is clean, clean, and, clean and, and safe, the deeper you go. Okay. So the, the shallower you are, the, the, the more risks you have in getting contamination. So for us as a ministry, yeah. we encourage the construction of deep boreholes. Yeah. And in fact, as a ministry, we concentrate on the construction of deep boreholes. Yeah. We do not encourage using government money hmm. to, do, to drill shallow wells. Shallow wells, yes. yes that's what uh, we have uh, Lydian, uh, that is Ranga, from Njeru Municipality, who said five years down the road, no, no water. water. Okay, now Njeru Municipal Council shares a water system with the, with the Jinja Municipality. Hmm. Uh, so it's one system. I would need to know where Lydian is... Uh, is, is, is located uh, and find out the reasons why the water does not reach his premises. Of mm. course, it may be that he maybe is far from uh, the so She stays in Mbiko. Um, oh, she stays in Mbiko. Mm. So now, what I can do with this, because Mbiko is, uh, is quite uh, not very far from mm. uh, Njeru municipality, yes. it's quite close. I think I will follow up Lydian's concern and, and then uh, see how we can. Uh, find a solution. But you know the reservoirs are in Mbiko itself. Okay. So there could be a, a possibility that it could be the, the pressure, the pressure maybe should be even raised ground, in which case the pressure may need to be increased so that this water can, uh, can, can reach her premises. But I will find out and then get back to Nigeria. Unfortunately, we didn't get the telephone number of Lillian, mm -hmm. but if she can call at, the, uh, at some appropriate time, then I could uh, follow up mm. until she, her case is, mm. is sorted. Okay, are you at liberty, maybe uh, by closure of this program, to have any number that's uh, maybe legal? From the call. ministry, maybe. From the ministry, necessary. how she can go about that? Okay, um, maybe for now I give mine, mm. and then uh, I will link her, because I don't have them in my head, yes, yes. the ones of the, of the ministry. Mm. But, but I can give her mine, mine is 0772 412 853. Okay. So Lillian, please call me and then uh, I will see if we can uh, assist address those people there. Your, your, your area. We have uh, a gentleman that is Sulaimani from Sironko. He says the water is only at the town. Mm. Away from town, and the their outskirts, taps are ready. The taps are ready. I don't know how <laughs> even they tried to connect, but they're waiting for water and uh, it's long overdue. It's only I think town. also. Mm. I, 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 I would uh, ask mm. Suleiman to call me because mm. uh, in this Rongo town we have got a lot of water. Actually, the capacity of the treatment plant is bigger than what we are supplying. Mm. So, if she is not, if the water is not reaching Suleiman's home, mm. I have to find out how far is he from the town, okay. so that then we can uh, make an effort and reach him. Mm. But. I will tell you that we have got a, a project which we have coordinated, which, which we have named um, acceleration, uh, service acceleration for piped water, 100%. Mm -hmm. We have to provide 100%. Mm -hmm. We have that project. Service acceleration for rural water? For water supply urban areas. Okay. So now what I, I can suggest mm -hmm. now, mm 
is that I will find out because our aim is to reach as many people as possible. Mm. Actually, when we construct the system, say for an urban area or a town council, mm. we may be focusing on the town council, but now mm. our policy is that this water system should be able to supply extensive areas mm. beyond the what? Mm. Just the township. Be beyond the township. The water has no boundary. Okay. So it, it should reach the outskirts the outskirts and beyond yeah. as far as it can mm. go well uh, finally yes. doctor as we wind up this show you've talked about uh, encouraging people to have water within uh, engineer to have water uh, engineer to have water near their premises yeah the biggest issue here is what is the cost mm -hmm. what is the cost of someone uh, getting water to their premises mm. because you might encourage people that ensure to avoid exploitation have water near but engineer please give us do you have the figure so someone can know mm. maybe i'm being exploited or mm. someone who has not been getting connected because they mm. think it's a high there's so much of cost required and mm. bureaucracy this is how easy the system is mm. now of course uh, the cost would depend on uh, how far you are from uh, from the main pipeline Mm. on which are going to be connected. Tap to tap. You tap yeah. Yeah. If you are within a distance of about 20 meters, 50 meters, then the cost is about 150,000 Uganda shillings. Mm. But if you are 50,000 and you say up to 70, it can almost come to 300,000 Uganda shillings. Mm. That is the cost of, uh, of installation. Now, this is not the money mm. that goes to the ministry. Mm. No, it is the money that you use to buy the materials. Mm. That is the, the pipe length. In fact, mm. when you are, uh, say, within 10 meters or 20 meters, we, m government can even provide that length of pipeline. Mm. Okay? Now, so this is the money that you use to buy the pipe, the fittings. You know, the fittings are many. You have got bends, you have got uh, valves, you have got, uh, and so on and so on, of course. Mm. You've got elbows. So, that is the money that you use to buy the materials from the open market, not from us. We don't sell those fittings. Those fittings are from the open market, from the hardware shops. Mm. So that's the money you should, you, 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 we, expect, you, we expect that you will spend mm. on that system. 150,000, if it is uh, about 20 meters, mm. or 300,000 shillings, if you are 50 mm. meters away. But of course, normally the challenge we get is we get that the many people come when their distance is 100 or, mm -hmm. or 200 meters, and then they expect to pay the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then our aim is, our, our duty now is to explain about the cost. We, 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 we work out the, the, the details of the fittings that you need, mm -hmm. and we give you the cost. Now, you don't even have to at times pay that money. You can also bring your fittings. But of course, for purposes of quality control, mm -hmm. We prefer that our people identify the materials and they, they store your, your Then you have other bureaucracies like LC, uh, land titles, such issues, because we've also had these claims that I want mm. to store water, but mm. think there's some documentation. No, there, there, there isn't much documentation. Mm. In fact, the, the most important thing is to identify the person. This is, and, and the national mm. ID is, is a sufficient document okay. to identify this person. But also the land title is good because when we are when we store you, mm. then we know and we are put a meter. We want to know where have we put the meter. We want the coordinates. Mm. So that's where at times we will say, please, if you have a land title, bring it. But even if you don't have a land title, still we can mm. we, we connect you on the water system. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Engineer. But finally, let's have your final remarks to our viewer regarding water and environment. Uh, my final remarks are, one, that, uh, I, as you have said, I want to appeal to the people to ensure that they, they get connected on our networks. Because our aim and the government plan is to ensure uh, that uh, as much as possible, everyone has got a yard connection uh, or, or an in-house connection. The reason is we want to eliminate no. the culture of fetching water. No. We don't want people to leave their homes to go and, and fetch water. And you know the hazards associated with the fetching of water. You have had the, the traditional problems no. of rape, 
um, the disease um, and, uh, and, the, and the criminal activities associated with the fetching water. So we want women and children to receive water at their doorsteps. That's what the government would wish to see. Therefore, I want the people to, 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 to make sure that they are connected. Then, too, I want people to understand that the water tariff is affordable. Mm. It's cheap. We are delivering cheap water. Then, lastly, I want to assure the population that the government is doing whatever it takes to ensure that the water reaches all parts of, the, of this country in the next 10 years. Okay, thank you uh, so much. That is Engineer uh, Kavuse Dominic, who is the Acting Director for Water uh, Development at the Ministry of Water and Environment. And of course, uh, those that, of course, are some of our callers that would require his number, uh, let me, the number is 0772-4128-53. Uh, Please, you can call in those that raise concerns that need a uh, follow-up and you will be getting a response. Well, uh, from me, Felix, and the, other and the entire team, I now hand you over to Felix, to, take, uh, to Ruben, to take you through the world of sports, and we will leave you with a quote of the day. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you.